All right, guys, we're going to talk about Toast Bar. So it's still a movement, a very common movement that I can I see people are able to actually do the movement, get their toes to the bar, um, but struggle with linking them together. Uh, so the movement for Toast Bar uh, starts at full extension underneath the bar. Um, at the top, both feet must uh, touch the bar in between the hands, and then on the way down, the heels must break the plane of the feet, must break the plane of the pull-up bar. So that's the toast bar. Um, so what I commonly see with people uh, is they start, they start out strong with their kip, and then as soon as they do their first one uh, and their feet come down, they kind of come stagnant and they can't link them together or connect. Um, but they have no trouble, again, with the movement of actually uh, touching their toes to the bar. So uh, I'm going to kind of demo what I see. So they're trying to use the hips and they're doing that part right, uh, but what they're missing or what's happening is that when they bring their toes to the bar, their shoulders stay underneath the bar and their hips stay underneath the bar. Um, in order to kip and in order to continue the motion to do consecutive reps, which I'll do here in just a minute, uh, the shoulders must close behind the bar, okay? the hips must come back behind the bar, and the toes. So you're almost going to be uh, at an angle, so like a, a sideways V, if you will. Um, that is the only way that if you were to continue this motion. So the movement also involves the shoulder. So people are using their hips, they're using their lats, their core, to get their toes to the bar, but they're not doing the, uh, the kipping motion of opening and closing um, at the shoulder, which is going to allow them to, uh, once they unload at the top, to reload, re-kip, and then go into their next one. So, uh, what it's going to look like to connect. Okay. So, when the feet are making contact at the top, the shoulders and the hips have to be on the other side of the bar with a closed uh, the closed shoulder. And then as the feet come back, you reload, you drive the heels back, and then you're gonna reopen to extension. So this is this is very similar to just your kip and pull up. Instead of pulling chin above the bar, you're driving your toes to the bar, pulling your toes to the bar. Um, so something to kind of help with that is to not so much worry yet about uh, getting the toes to the bar, but just working that angle of Shoulders back behind the bar, keeping the arms straight while doing that, um, and then just trying to get your feet up as high as you can. Okay, so what happens as soon as people try to pull their toes to the bar, they also pull their hips underneath as well, and then what happens, again, is the same thing. They bring their feet down, and they have to re-engage re their kip. Okay, so something that's very easy to kind of work on, and then as you get comfortable with the movement, and you figure out how to, so biggest thing with this movement uh, is it does involve the shoulders, and a lot of people just kind of uh, delete that part. So just working on kind of getting your feet as high as you can, but your focus is going to be the opening and closing of the shoulders. So just trying to get the shoulders back, and then as you get comfortable, you start to pull higher until you're actually making contact with the bar. Okay? So that's the most common fault is just, you know, people understand the movement, um, but they aren't getting their shoulders and their hips back behind the bar at the same time that their toes are making contact with the bar. Um, now I'm going to go over two, there's two different types of toes to bar that you can do. Uh, one of them is a little bit faster uh, cycle time, the other is a little bit longer. Um, they both have advantages and disadvantages. So the first one I'm going to go over uh, is kind of more of one with a, a bent knee. So it requires a lot more core, um, but you can cycle through it a lot faster. So with that one, I'm bending the knees, pulling my knees, almost kind of uh, into a tuck position, pulling my knees to my chest, and then once I get high enough, I just flick, kick, extend the knees, touch the bar with both my feet, and then come back down. So this one, again, has a faster cycle time, a uh, little less involvement or engagement with the lats, requires a lot more core. So core is going to fatigue, so even though it's faster cycle, maybe something to work with with shorter reps, um, but it's going to uh, fatigue the core a lot faster. 
Uh, the second one is going to be with legs straight. So for somebody that maybe struggles with uh, hamstring flexibility, doesn't have that flexibility, this one might be a more difficult one. Um, but it's going to save the core, requires a little bit more lats, um, and then so I'd say it's a little bit slower cycle. Again, so a workout with, with higher volume of toes to bar, you might want to go with the second, maybe one that has shorter volume uh, first, or if you know that you're pretty efficient, uh, being able to move back and forth with faster cycle time, as soon as you hit fatigue, being able to move into uh, uh, engagement of more of the lats, less of the core, to, to save that from that burnout or that fatigue. So uh, that's your Toast Bar lesson for today, guys. If you have any more questions or any other videos that you want to see, uh, please post in the comments or email at jessica at carhustrength.com. Thanks.